Okay, I'll check in. Okay. All right, hi guys, this is Tim Frazen from Forces and I'm here with a really good friend of myself and my wife, Lisa Barnett. She has been um, uh, an amazing resource for us in, in, our, in our lives and in the current work she does and in, in the friendships. And she, she's here to share her journey as a professional in, in, uh, in, in corporate as well as as an independent business owner, international best-selling author, uh, speaker. You know, she can tell you all the details of what she's doing. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Tim. I'm really excited to be here and share this space with you. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, if you can start with a little bit of your background, uh, people may not have uh, had a chance to look up your page and you, you know, what you're doing. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you started. I mean, let me just go as far back. You know, this is the journey of life. How did you start in, in the corporate? What did you do to transition? And maybe give us a little background. Absolutely. So I started with a degree in commercial photography. And so I actually started thinking that I would be a freelance photographer, but I was really lucky to get a job working for one of the biggest ad agencies of the day, J. Walter Thompson in Chicago, which was very exciting to me. I was in my 20s, as most of us are, I think, as we start um, from college into the corporate world. And I was being trained as an assistant production director. And I was in a group of, I think there was a half a dozen men and I was the only woman. And so of course my desk was in the front, answering the phones, making appointments and schedules. And in the spare time, kind of being trained as around production and print production. And so again, you know, 40 years ago, it really was the norm. The great majority of people working in corporate were men and many, many of the women were the secretaries. And though working in the creative field, you had a few more art directors, copywriters, things like that in an ad agency. So we were a little ahead of the curve, even, you know, 40 years ago. But what I found was that working in a group with only men was exhausting. And I started to realize that that was because it was very much about doing. It was always the schedule, the plan, get it done, push through, make it happen, especially when you're looking at advertising and deadlines. It was high, high stress, I think for everyone, men and women alike. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that day and age and, and that more masculine version, the, the left brain logical linear mindset was very prevalent in the corporate world. So I burned out on that relatively quickly and sure. um, moved back to California where I'm from. And so got into a little bit more of the creative aspect, still corporate, still working in print production and in a smaller agency. But again, mostly men and kind of me and maybe um, another woman assistant. And so what I realized is over that journey, even my own assistants were afraid of me. And it was kind of a crazy epiphany when one of my um, assistants told someone that I was scary. And I thought, how in heaven's name can I be scary? But again, it was kind of an awakening to the fact that I wasn't really being me. I was living in this very male-driven corporate world. And I was running a lot of what I would call male energy. I was fitting in. And if we think back 40 years, when women went to work, we dressed like men. We wore suits, right? We wore a skirt and a blazer. We often were taking on that same look to try and fit in, to try and be more masculine. And so for so many of us, I think that the burnout and exhaustion of not truly being in a more feminine flow in hiding our femininity, in pretending we don't have children, in kind of all of so many of those aspects that came up in the corporate world, that it really um, added a whole nother level of, of stress for, for women. And I imagine 
a level of stress for the men too, because they were so used to going to work, getting it done, making it happen. And all of a sudden, if you have a, um, another person in your department who has to stay home with a sick child or, you know, has much more of an energetic flow to their life instead of the get it done, um, it can be disruptive until we really can kind of figure it out. No. So well, over it, it, those it, it, years, oh, I, oh, so go ahead. I was just going to actually get a comment. Um, I actually think you know you, you hit a key nerve for me at least that when we get the the woman steps into the man's role, or it could work the other direction where the man steps into the woman's role, it throws the relationship off balance at home, and this is a compound problem because of their business uh, as well as what the expectation was. So thank you for bringing that up because I, I think that has has a really strong play in what I, I think you're going to talk about next about how things change. And how it can change. <laughs> <laughs> right, absolutely. And I think, you know, this is why I'm excited to, you know, be here having this conversation with you, Tim, because International Women's Day is so important in our world now. We've obviously gone through the last 40 or more years of, of bringing many, many more women into the workplace, into corporate, the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect is trying to figure out how we really do that with ease and how it becomes comfortable and how everyone can start to work, you know, in their own natural sort of flow and mindset. Because we know that, you know, women run a different kind of brain pattern. We are much more... Um, I don't want to say much more creative, but we live much more in that creative um, right brain compared to the more linear left brain. And so I completely believe that we are both, both, we both are, have male and female abilities and talents and gifts, right? Just like we have a left and a right brain. Women can be very linear and logical. Men can be very creative and sensitive and emotional, right? So to me, part of where we're going and the part of the conversation that I'm finding more fascinating is for each of us, male or female, to live our own authentic life and um, way of being. So many men really are those creatives and sensitives and, and many women really have a lot of interest in the detail or the science or really, you know, all of the follow-up that, that, um, that is so important, especially in our business life, right? And so being conscious that we have both aspects and trying to balance them in ourselves first, right? And then in our workplace is so important. It's, it's great. Um, so how did you go from corporate to what you're doing now? Can you talk about what was, what was the trigger and motivation for you to do something different? And then talk uh, more about, so you as an international uh, best-selling author, speaker, you, you travel the world. I mean, honestly, we can't keep up with your travel schedule. Now that COVID is hit, even still, we wonder where, you, where the heck you're going next. And uh, it's awesome to see you touch so many people. Absolutely. So, um, I had children very late in life, so I was almost 40 by the time um, I had my children. And so I decided now that I'm having children, I'm going to stay home with them. So I took quite a few years off to be a stay at home mom because that was so important. Even though I had a great corporate life, even though um, I was making probably a little more money than my, even my husband, who's a CPA at that point, and he was like, What? You're, you're quitting work? I'm like, <laughs> no, someone's got to stay home with the kids. And that was really the way I felt that was important to me. And um, not to spend, you know, an hour, an hour and a half commuting each way every day, and, and not be with my kids, especially since I had waited till I was almost 40. But as I was a stay at home mother, and being just a very kind of driven individual, I started to study again, and really go back more into depth about, you know, who am I? What did I come to really share with the world? What are my personal gifts and talents? 
-hmm. And many of us look at that as what is my purpose? And because I've become really um, a spiritual leader and teacher, it's very much about who we are as a, as a bigger soul and what that purpose is that we've come to share with humanity. And so I was really blessed to be able to do quite a bit of studying. And I started my own healing center back then in the area where I lived. So I could work part-time and be home with the kids when the kids were home from school. Mm -hmm. And so I started to write books, which became international best-selling books. And, I, you know, it just kind of step by step, I grew my business. I started to speak on bigger platforms at, at um, bigger events in San Francisco and California and started to travel some back then, 20 some odd years ago, um, to some of the big mind, body, spirit events that were happening in the, in the world at that time. And so, um, like often our businesses do, it really grew naturally. And part of it grew because at that point, I was really very clearly much more in my own feminine um, power. I was living much more in alignment to what I, as a person, as a soul, had come to bring out to the world. And I was able to relax more into some of the flow and learn about and understand, not that it's easy, but what I call divine timing. So I found after 20 years of corporate world, I like to get it done and make it happen. And I run a lot of that kind of more male energy is the way I see it. Um, and so bringing in more of that, a little bit more relaxed, feminine, creative energy to let myself be in the flow and let things happen in kind of that perfect timing in what I would call, you know, divine right order. And so as we kind of realize that the universe is also here supporting us, if we can really stay much more in that flow, things come and happen. And um, I know you and Julie often will kind of laugh and say, oh my gosh, you manifest so many things so easily. How do you do it? And really my answer is by allowing myself to stay in you know, my flow. And everybody's flow is different. And I also spend a lot of time working very hard to stay in that flow because it's not easy for all of us to stay balanced. You know, I've got the family, I've got the speaking, the traveling, the books. I just finished my third book and it's a lot of doing. But again, part of what I'm seeing is, is that women have so many beautiful gifts and um, talents. And a lot of that has to do with our compassion and our caring and our ability to see a bigger picture or to stay more clearly in flow. And as we do that, I find that business grows, that my entrepreneurial business grows with ease because I'm doing what I came to do and I'm opening my heart and allowing myself to share those gifts. Lovely. You know, I meant to ask you this earlier so you can uh, uh, talk about that, but I, I think I know you well enough to know what your answer is going to be. Um, it's, it's about, did you ever have like a feminine or male mentor um, that you really looked to to build your path around guidance from them that, and how did that make a difference in your life? Uh, there's some people, and I think it's, you know, the way I, I know you, um, I know you're self-driven, but I just don't know, even people who are self-driven needs some balance of, you know, a validation and mentorship or whatever. Can you talk a little bit about how did you embrace that, if at all? Yeah, that's, it's a great question, Tim. And it kind of makes me think back. Um, for a while, I actually studied and trained with a, a, a woman who was a very um, beautiful spiritual teacher and, and worked with her for about 
almost eight years. And so she was really my first mentor. And I did have another, um, I have had women mentors over, you know, the last 20, 25 years in, in different capacities. I've just spent two years working with a, a really wonderful um, woman who is a coach, a business coach, really helping entrepreneurs to grow their business, to understand some of the, um, the steps and really how you can expand a business. Sure. And, um, and on top of it, you know, it's kind of a nice fit for me because she's also very spiritual and really believes in divine flow and, and really higher guidance and, you know, kind of bringing all of that in to support our business as we're hiring teammates and understanding marketing and, you know, and taking all those steps that we also need to um, take. So in a way, it's a beautiful blend and balance of some of the, what I tend to consider a little bit more of the masculine doing linear logical growing a business with mm -hmm. the divine feminine flow and creativity. Lovely. You know, it's, uh, um, I know that certainly you, uh, because we, we kind of track your, your, your activities and where you're going and stuff like that as a friend of ours, uh, my, my wife also does the same thing, and she, she, she made a comment to me, which I, I actually think really helps um, put it in perspective. Mentors can show up in all kinds of places, like we were talking about, you know, they, they show up in your life. In, in your particular case, and even certainly with, with, with us, you have to make the space and the time to allow for that, right? So that may mean you may need to, get, you know, hire somebody uh, to grow your business, to get coaching. So there's a lot of what I call personal coaches uh, that will align to your, your path and your journey and your spiritual growth, like you pointed out. Um, it's Don't just expect somebody to show up and guide you. You sometimes actually have to do the work. <laughs> most of the time absolutely actually. absolutely you know there's been parts and you know in times where my mentors were you know somebody that I was studying with so of course yeah. I was paying them to study with them and be in a in a, a program mm -hmm. um, and there's coaches that I've hired and then there's also amazing business masterminds and um, different kinds of business meetings and and usually we have to join them we often pay to belong to these masterminds or these kinds of groups that have mentors that have people who have are at least one or two steps uh, ahead of us so that we can learn from them, that we can follow their amazing examples, that they can often share information with us on how they got there. And so growing an entrepreneurial business really does take both, you know, of course, spending um, money on hiring marketing people and hiring a team, right, as we grow our businesses, but also really investing in our own growth and our own learning and, you know, investing in uh, masterminds or mentors to assist us so that we, you know, it's the old uh, saying, you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. And so really hiring those people because they're out there wanting to mentor us. But of yeah. course, their information, their wisdom, their time is valuable. So they're not giving it away for free either. And no. so um, really looking for that next higher step for yourself to help grow your business, whether you're an entrepreneur or even your corporate business. Obviously, we still need to learn and grow in whatever we're doing. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, uh, the analogy I, I get is uh, I've been in the I've been in the tech business since I was 19. So it's, you know, more than more than 20 plus more than 30 plus maybe close to 40 years. So people ask me, how did I survive? Because I'm kind of uh, relatively speaking, I'm a, I'm a dinosaur in that capacity uh, relative to my peers that have come and gone in, 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 in tech. And they, they, I always, the number one question I get is how do you, how do you stay up and how do you continue to stay current? And the answer is I invest in myself. This is exactly what you just said. And I have to learn constantly. Uh, it's learning how to learn is part of this. And also I think uh, the, the thing going back to the choose to challenge theme on the International Women's Day, um, how would you, maybe your closing comments, encourage the, the people at Forces or people who are watching this video around the world uh, about 
the things that were your your drivers, uh, because I know you are you have a challenger mindset. But that just might be your DNA. But I'm not sure if you, if it, you know, it, because there isn't a thing, a thing I've seen you not embrace and just manifest it into amazing things. But it takes a mindset shift. And, and all the people who are naysayers, I'm sure you had a lot of naysayers. I mean, to go from a corporate job into, and you haven't really actually said what you do in your current thing. I'd like to explore that for a minute because I think it's important because you 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 followed your passion and you also followed your guidance. So talking about the choose to challenge, what was the challenge? For, for you and what was the messaging to other people to challenge it? Sometimes it's yourself, sometimes it's it's a norm. So can you talk a little bit about that as a clinic closing comments? Absolutely. So um, I really help people to understand and access their own soul's guidance and who you are as a very infinite and wise soul so that we can access and reclaim many of the gifts and talents that we have, whether it's in our DNA or coming from other lifetimes. And so um, I really help people to embrace a bigger truth and to align to your soul's purpose so that people can move forward, especially, um, I mean, in so many different ways, people often come to me for help around starting a business. And is this really in alignment to what I came to do with the soul? Often our relationships that we have, whether they're part of our soul's contract, if it's about our own soul's learning and growth or supporting other individuals, we actually come to earth to support other individuals that are very connected to us as souls. And so um, I really help people to see the bigger picture of life, that it's so much more than just your, your job and how much money you make or the car you drive or, you know, or your family. It's really a very big concept. And so, of course, going from advertising to being a spiritual healer, teacher, author, um, I was, I have to say, very blessed because I was born into a family who was open-minded. And so many people get kind of stuck by the family that they're born into, or there could be their spouse or whoever that might be that may think that's crazy. You can't go there. Um, mm -hmm. But that to me was the, you know, kind of choose to challenge the status quo and realizing, knowing deep in my own um, heart and my own conscious awareness, because I was always very kind of consciously aware spiritually from the time I was very young. <laughs> I literally started studying spirituality as a teenager at, at 14. So very much part of who I am, what I came to um, do. But really, for me, it is challenging that status quo that that this is it, this is our one little life and make the best of it and work really hard. So you make good money and, you know, keep your fingers crossed that everything goes well. Because I know that it's so much more than that. And um, that is, of course, always my, my challenge is to help people wake up is to realize there's so much more to the world than this. And I'm so excited because as we're moving forward here into, you know, 2021, I see so many people realizing there's more to life than just what they thought, you know, than just getting that degree, getting that job and, and do, do, doing. And I've had really hundreds of people over the last few years come to me and literally say, like, I just woke up. <laughs> it's like, I just realized there's more to life than just my job or, you know, just my work. And so I really believe as we do that, raise our consciousness, expand our consciousness, spend more time in our heart space and kind of out of that linear, logical worry, fear state, feeling that love, the peace, um, that energy of, of compassion and forgiveness, that as we go forward, life will become really so much easier as we live in alignment to who we are as really beautiful, ancient divine souls. 
Lovely. You know, it's uh, obviously everything you said applies to both men and women, right? So this is not gender gender specific, uh, but I'd like to, I thought of one last close question. So if I can, um, uh, being that I, I'm a friend of yours and I understand the value and the, and the power of the male support and the female support in the, in the, not only in the work, but the home space, what would be your message to the males to support the feminine uh, energy um, to grow and expand and do what you're just talking about? Because it is, there's some family dynamics and there's work dynamics. Maybe it's a, it's, it's a work scenario. It could be a you know personal scenario. Uh, what would be your message to the men? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, you know, interestingly, the way it comes through to me is um, it's for both of us. It's for, for men and women. And it really is about supporting each other to be the best that we can be. And that may mean that men want to spend a little bit more time in meditation or in nature or um, whatever it is, yoga. It's interesting for me because I've been married for 30 years now and my husband is a CPA and he's very linear, very logical, works seven days a week for months on end. And his connection to spirituality is nature. And so he spends many weekends um, backpacking and camping and has been a Boy Scout mentor for probably almost 20 years and really teaching young men to connect to nature and the, the profound energy that we can experience when we're trusting on ourselves to survive out in the woods for a oh, week, yeah. when we just have, you know, all we need on our back for, for five or, you know, 10 days and to really connect. But being under those stars, being out in nature, it lets us open our heart and feel right? It helps us to naturally move out of our head without any kind of weird, you know, woo-woo kitschy stuff to just naturally be in our element. And so supporting our partners and um, to be the highest and best they can. So I, you know, I support my husband and being gone a lot of weekends when he's not working to be out in nature because that's so much a source of his um, energy and his spirituality. So really supporting the men in our lives to really um, uh, discover, to look around and see, how can I open my heart? How can I relax a little more? How can I feel more peace? And also vice versa. And so I think it's a really beautiful time if you're in a partnership at home to possibly even think about Maybe we do some yoga together, or maybe we create a meditative practice so we can all start to move out of the workaday stress world, the fear, the push, that high energy, which is so exhausting, and to support each other in more heart-centered exercise, maybe like hiking in nature, doing yoga, doing meditation, really starting to share our feelings. And it's not always comfortable for women to see their um, male counterpart be emotional, right? It can be very freaky to us if our husbands uh, cry, right? But being supportive of emotions for men, for women, for each other, really to embrace our yeah. authentic selves in all ways. Lovely. You, uh, you know, Lisa, you, you reminded me of an example. I had a personal experience, uh, and I think you're talking about the cry. It's a very, very simple, you know, we, we've been so conditioned that crying is a we, uh, uh, sign of weakness. Um, and uh, I, I learned early in my career, I was actually about 28 years old, and I was in a, in a leadership position on a large corporation. And uh, I had one person who would break down and cry a lot in, at the office, and and I had I had to really sit with that for a little bit as a male um, to understand what's really going on here, and it got to a place where um, it I, I had to be in a place where I did not number one judge that right, but it's more than that. <clears throat> 
I learned a technique and I, every time the lady would come into my office and she'd want to explain something and she'd go into, into an emotional um, you know, uh, display through crying, uh, I would just have a, a, back, a, a box of tissues. I just have them in my office. I just keep handing her tissues and she would just keep going. No judgment, no evaluations. It's just the fact that she had to process through her feeling systems. And me as a, as a, as a left brain tech uh, guy, it was very difficult for me to, uh, you know, to really not judge that. And, and as, a, as a person, uh, as, and in my personal growth, to me, that was actually, I, I mean, it was just, that was over, over th close to 30 years ago. Uh, and I remember that to, to this day, that us men need to accept what a, a woman uh, or feminine energy, um, how they process their emotions and their feelings, because you get past that, you're going to get the best of them out of them. And, and, and that's the part that you've got to look for. So you don't block it and allow. So thank you for reminding, reminding you of that story. I had to share that with you guys. So. Yeah, and, and I'm curious, did she kind of move through that and then learn to be, or, and, and sometimes it we're so pent up, we just have to get it out and then we're okay and we can start to yeah. have normal conversations without breaking down every time because we've released some of that pent up emotion and that fear that no one will listen to us and that no one cares and all of that, um, you know, yeah. those emotions that get so stuck. So, you know, yeah. it's, you asked a really good question. Uh, did she work through that? Actually, she really did. Um, and that was, a, that was a healing for her as much as for, for us as a team, because people didn't know how to handle that. Us, us, you know, male guys in the tech environment, we didn't really know how to deal with that. She had a lot to say, and she didn't have a voice to say it. And then her emotions, when they were processing that, the voice came out. And that allowed her to be really be able to say what was on her mind. And the interesting thing is there's different kind of people in life when you work with them. They either just, you know, shut, shut off and they go away. They don't want to talk about it because you shut them up. Or they really just need to be processing. And then you will get uh, what's really underneath that. And the ones that care will, the emotion is, we're just human beings. The emotion is part of that. She cared so much that she really wanna make a difference. And she was not allowed that space to do that in when prior managers. And when I came, it allowed me to work with her. And then the team, it, it, the whole team expanded. And we all had, you know, tissues on our desk. And if somebody had a problem, uh, they, they got a tissue and we, we would continue to talk through the problem. And, and, uh, and she did uh, absolutely excel in her job. Um, and and I, I encourage men to just small piece of that. You'll find other examples of that where you can support a woman in, in, in a workplace. Um, because it is, like you said, it's a partnership. This is just like just like home with the, with the with the spouse. It's you, you got to understand where's the best of each other, and you come together as a partnership. You don't come together to do one each other's jobs because the best is going to be when you see it. it's a multiplier effect when two come together. And that's my personal experience. So, any okay. so I know uh, we keep asking you for closing comments. I just love talking to you. So um, thank you, Lisa. If you if you do have. Uh, you know, um, a message to to the to the people on our team, um, and and quite frankly, if they want to talk to you uh, directly, can you just uh, just talk a little bit about where they can find you, other than LinkedIn? But you've you've got your sites, right? Absolutely, my my website is akashicknowing.com, which is a little bit of a odd spelling, so I'm going to spell it quick. It's A K A S H I C knowing, K-N-O-W-I-N-G.com, akashicknowing.com. You'll find all sorts of information and my books and more about how, um, how we can work together if finding out more about your soul's purpose and plan speaks to you. Super. Well, thank you, Lisa. I really appreciate you making the time at a short notice from my heart to yours. Uh, we love you as a family and uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts with uh, people at Forces to encourage both men and women to be in the heart space and grow. Thank, thank you. you Tim.